Here's Brody Brazil. The A's did begin with 20 some odd sites, and then they kind of whittled it down to maybe three favorites that we heard about festival grounds. Uh, the the Rio site and this Tropicana site. Then there was the different site. There was the binding purchase agreement for the Wild Wild West site. Now we're back to a few. I don't know if anything's off the table or everything's still on the table. But my question is this, the way that politicians view this, the way that the public is viewing this right now, multiple sites, is that breeding more confidence to have multiple sites or is it breeding confusion to have multiple sites? A little of both. I mean, it was really, it seemed to be the, the that kind of wheeled up as the favorite was the festival grounds and most recent, most recently, because that was on the north end of the Las Vegas Strip. Right. Clean site of land uh, owned by Phil Ruffin. He's, uh, Phil Ruffin owns the Cir- both Circus Circus Las Vegas, which is how he acquired the festival grounds when he bought that from MGM Resorts. And he also owns Treasure Island. Uh, that seemed to be the focus. A lot of the casino operators on the north end of the strip were really excited about it. The north end of the strip has kind of not been as developed as much as the south end of the strip, uh, where city center is, where all these other major projects went in over the last, you know, before the before everything stopped in like in in about two, uh, 2010 with the recession. Right. Um, he would, that, that seemed to be the focus on the side, especially the north end guys. They were really up for it. But I finally reached Mr. Ruffin uh, the other day or last week, I think it was. I got an email back from him and he said he, he couldn't come to agreement with the A's on the site and he wasn't going to sell it. He, they, the, the economics weren't working. And he's a very shrewd businessman. He's a billionaire and he's he he held on to it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really what happened there. Uh, they were really what's interesting is the Tropicana site where it is right today that was when they first kind of focused on last year that was came out and everybody couldn't really figure out how you're going to fit a stadium in with the with the hotel casino right uh the chairman of tropicana uh sue kim he's a um he's a hedge fund uh uh he's the head hedge fund of, so let me take that back sue kim's the chairman of bally's corporation which owns the Tropicana. it's a hedge fund very wealthy he's been involved in gaming here in vegas he owned uh, a small casino called the aliante it was part of a bondholders that got it through bankruptcy ironically from red rock resorts wow. <laughs> back, in, back in the late <laughs> late 2000s so yeah so it, it but we were all trying to figure that out and it kind of went away with the thought of the festival grounds, the Rio was out there. We didn't know the extent of the Rio until after they focused back on the Wild Wild West site. And that site's, uh, in total, it's like 100 acres. Right. And it was Red Rock Resorts, big locals, casino operator in Vegas, the Fertitta brothers who used to own the UFC. They're the, the primary operators of, uh, of Red Rock Resorts. They, uh, they, they had, a, they had a plan back in the in in the late two thousands to build Viva on that site, which would be, remember, it's like a smaller version of City Center in some ways. It's going to be a massive site. They even had an idea for an arena for the UFC on that site. So I mean, there was a lot of talk, but then the recession hit. Uh, Red Rock State at the time they were known as Station Casinos. They went into Chapter Eleven bankruptcy reorganization, and they came out of it as Red Rock Resort. So. The site's just been sitting there, and last September they announced they were clo- all of a sudden announced they were closing the Wild Wild West Casino, old, you know, very small, you know, truck stoppish casino right there on Tropicana and and just west of two of uh, Interstate 15, closed it, demolished it. Mm-hmm. That's all we heard. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of it. Uh, Dave, when when they first announced they were. Getting forty nine acres, buying forty nine acres from uh, Red Rock Resorts for the you know for the for the for the casino, right? And then have like an agreement for another eight acres. Dave Cavill, when I interviewed him, the president of the A's, he told me that was their favorite site. Mm-hmm. That was the preferred site they had, and it came back on the market, is what is is how he put it. So, it. now lo and behold, a week later, they're over at the Tropicana, right? And <laughs> so, so between these two sites, I mean, it it does seem like in in the the sentiment that I've gauged is that locals prefer the wild, wild west site. And obviously the tourist interest would be at the Tropicana. Is is there any other main distinguishable differences? I know it's only a couple blocks. It's literally on the same street, but it seems like worlds apart. What's the two sites? 
we have a huge um if you've i don't know if you've been in vegas at any time recently many doing, times many times <laughs> yeah, well they're doing a redevelopment of the tropicana interchange right over the, over the i-15 right over the i-15 yeah. it's a huge redevelopment going on right now a lot yeah. of it being done because of allegiance stadium right that's that that was the um you know that's been a big issue you know trying to get traffic in and out of that so it's going to be a real good interchange so i don't think it really matters for locals um if it's on one one of those one side or the other of the of, of i-15 they would they would go matter. to the locals would go to the strip though you don't see that as a deterrent uh, I, that's going to be a challenge that always is but then again the locals go to the strip for the because that's where uh t-mobile arena is for the golden sure. knights absolutely I'm going, there, I'm going there tonight for game for game five so <laughs> yeah so they, and there's a lot of construction going on around there to, yeah. to, as part of this interchange um at work so yeah that's um locals will go uh as long as limit and this is a whole other subject as long as it's a compelling product right to go see right so that's gonna be the big issue right uh, the the difference of the two sites it's really boils down to economics and i think that was that is part of the reason why they've come off why they came off of the of the wild wild west side and moved over to the tropicana um it was the challenge was the 500 million in public money sure yeah. I'm not an economist. <laughs> Me neither. I barely passed math, you know, in college, but they were trying to make the economics work. Yeah. The the tax package. It's and the best way to explain the tax package, it's almost like a user fee. And I'll use the for example, Allegiant Stadium was a seven hundred and fifty million dollar uh public money in public money. That's all on room taxes. They created a room tax. If you and if you go stay on the strip, stay anywhere, whether you're going to an event at Legion Stadium or just in town for to, to go have fun in Vegas, there's a small percentage of your hotel room tax that goes to help pay off the $750 million in public money at Allegiant. Right. The site at the truck, this the the uh the five hundred million dollar site, you know, five hundred million dollar uh connect uh package connected with the the the, the Wild Wild West site. That was only going to be ta- all the taxes based on what was spent at that 49 acres. So the A's are going to do you have the stadium. You're going to have this entertainment district with restaurants and retail. All those taxes, that would go to pay off the $500 million. And there were some questions about that. There was also uh, the A's were purchasing the land from Red Rock Resorts. So now, and there's no, we don't know the price yet what the price was on that because uh red rock resorts the deal hadn't closed it was an nda i think too right well there's an nda yeah. and because also red rock would have eventually disclosed it because right. they are a public company and would have had to be disclosed right right so now you move over to the tropicana and they're doing and they're working with bally's corporations like i said it's right a casino company they're in a regional they're out of rhode island uh, in 14 state, 14 properties in 10 states, uh, they they bought the Tropicana. They bought the operations of the Tropicana last year. The 34 acre site is owned by a real estate investment trust named GLP Gaming and Leisure Properties. Bally's pays GLPI ten and a half million dollars a year in rent to lease the site. Bally's had talked about remodeling the Tropicana. This is a very old casino. It's a Rat Pack era hotel casino. I've stayed there. <laughs> it's, all I need, it's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's piecemeal with all the renovations that have been done over yeah. time. Yeah. In what, from the understanding now, we're finding out, Bally's, not only were they going to, they're not going to renovate, they were going to demolish it sure. at some point and build from there. It's much if you understand Vegas, it's what we do out here. It's a it's, it's spectator sport. We blow up a casino, blow up an old hotel casino in the middle of the night, right? And then mm-hmm. they rebuild. Every property on the strip has been has been done that. So that's not that wasn't a surprise. What I think this did by getting offering the A's nine acres on the site for just the stadium, not the they won't have the entertainment district around it, right? Just the stadium. What it did is. Bally's right now is in the middle of building a $1.7 billion hotel casino in downtown Chicago. That is the main focus for this company. That's what they're really heavily focused on. 
So they decided, though, however, if the A's were going to come in, build the stadium, they would just wipe out the Tropicana now, you know, and give the A's a clean site. They'll get the baseball stadium. At some point, they'll come back in and build a hotel casino separate from separate from the same. It won't be attached to the stadium. But I can envision in some way where they can do this kind of interim district where you can connect the two properties, you know, with, with you know, parking and however you're going to do it. Sure. And, that will happen over time. But I think for the time being is they would just clear out the site and give the A's basically a clean slate of land go and build a stadium. The A's don't also have to pay for uh, the land costs. Right. Because, no land purchase, right? It's a, it's right, a rental no situation. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Exactly, Brody. So I think what they're going to – and what that does is uh, that's what helped bring down the, the public financing right. piece. Right. And that's, that's now down to $395 right. million. So I think that's what's kind of going on right now. They're trying to – work out all those details. And I think we'll see this in the front of the legislature in the next week or two. Yeah. <laughs> Getting tight. The, the legislature ends in Nevada in, in June 6th. So yeah, we gotta, they got to get this done quick. I want to hit on that next, the whole legal side of it, which I I know minimal amount. I'm learning as I go, and I know that's that's your expertise. But one last thing on, on sites and projects and all that stuff. Sure. At the Tropicana site, nine acres and $1.5 billion. It seems like, well, I know, I know this, nine acres is very tough to put a big league ballpark on that, that acreage. I've, I've been to almost all of them around the country, even places like Pittsburgh, that's 14 acres, San Francisco's 12, and that's pushing it. I mean, that's already Mm -hmm. tight. So to do nine seems tough. And also for something on the strip, I mean, it's my opinion. And as a guest of Las Vegas, when I go there, these new projects knock my socks off. Look at the MSG sphere. Uh, is that 2.4 billion now? I mean, Vegas- 2.3 billion is more expensive than a Legion Stadium. There That's you how. go. I mean, yeah. the, Vegas does stuff that is supposed to blow you away. So <clears throat> nine acres seems like a bare minimum site and $1.5 billion seems like a bare minimum cost. Uh, are you in agreement that 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 is that, that 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 viewpoint is accurate, and can they still do something special here for those those values? I think we want to see renderings and, and the plans and everything. I think that's what we really need to see to understand this yeah. um, on how they do it. I remember, I mean, I, the A's have said it. And it's, remember, this is also 35,000 seats, which is smaller, I think, than than uh, the, the stadium in San Francisco. I think it's smaller than the stadium in Pittsburgh. It's sig- significantly smaller. Yeah, those are those are 40s and low 50s. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going there. They've held on to 35,000 seats. I've seen somewhere it's at 30, but it's 35,000 seats. They want to do the retractable roof. Right. Trust me. You don't want to go to a baseball no. game <laughs> in the daytime in July out in, in Vegas. So I think that's part of it. And I think that and it's. You know, they're t- I think we just really need to see these renderings, what the plans are, how this is going to look. And I imagine they're going to they're going to ask those questions when if, if this comes in front of the legislature soon. <laughs>